Okay, we're going to go back to G. Oh. I said right. it by mistake. No public comments for G. All right, so now then the board will uh, take action on that one. Okay, is there a motion to name Nancy Castillo to the governing board uh, the piece to the P to the PC? I'll make the motion to uh, reappoint Nancy Castillo to the personnel commission. I'll go ahead and, and do a second on that. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Four ayes and one no, Mr. Lorenzo Cast Calderon, what a no. Any comments from the public on H? Yes, you have three public comments and one will zoom in, which would be Mr. Ben Horton. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. So the first public comment is from Ismael Lopez. Dear board members, I want to congratulate all for an excellent activity in regards of analyzing, approving, helping, and directing the different needs of our schools and students. I have been seeing the progress and quality of all improvements that are being made as a result of Measure V approval and funds. Let me applaud your decisions, directives, and approval of contractors, vendors, service providers, et cetera, and all their personnel for a well job done and for making these improvements and expansion a reality. Now with Measure Q approved or soon to be in place or maybe already organized to engage all projects listed in this measure, I encourage all of you to maintain the same group of individuals and businesses that are making Measure V a total success. It is an understanding to all Calexico citizens that Measure Q is or should be a continuation of benefits to our schools. Let's keep these improvements and additions running smoothly, utilizing same expert people. Congratulations again for always making or approving proposals that make our school system better. Job well done. Sincerely, Ismael Lopez. And the second one is from Mr. Dan Daniel Romero. After Measure V was approved a few years ago, everyone stumbled out of the gate. After Mr. Vega was hired, his recommendations to CUSD Board of Trustees and Measure V Citizens Oversight Committee on how to best move forward. I was relieved when CUSD recently approved renewing the contract with Jimmy Sanders. I ask you to do the same with School Site Solutions and Mr. Dominguez. Mr. Vega has put together a team which has produced a series of success stories which we can all be proud of. Now imagine the same minds resuming their planning, designing, and constructing to permit them with the ongoing evolution of our high school. I'm asking you to permit Mr. Vega to maintain the same team to hit the ground running when the Measure Q funds become available. It is. It's a fine-tuned machine right now with different minds working together as one. So much has been done. Keep as is. This way no one stumbles out of the gate under Measure Q. Thank you.
ocean has given us the envy of the valley, what we can do. We have the right property correction uh, uh, project uh, manager. I'll give you another example, and you can look at this. Out of all the measures that went through the valley, Measure Q was the only one that passed because the people saw the end result what has taken place in reference to Measure V. Now we have an opportunity to do the same thing, and which is going to be a lot tougher with Measure Q. They're going to be more involved to make that a success. And I feel that site, uh, school site solution has the ability and the knowledge to make this happen. I hope that you will uh, renew or their contract so we can have a successful Measure Q. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's all the public comments? Yes. Okay, we'll go to uh, presentation, parent involvement. So we'll have Ms. Ramirez give a presentation on parent involvement. Okay. Are you going to post the presentation? So good evening. Um, today I want to do a quick presentation on what we've done as a district for parent involvement. Ooh. You move it? Okay, it's better. So our goal is to increase parent involvement so that in return our, our parents can leverage involvement directly to support our student learning. And we do have objectives Next one. that are tied to our LCAP and to our Title I plan. Um, so the following are some of the objectives that we have. So it, our objectives include provide training and support to parents that directly support student learning in the areas of literacy development, math, parenting, and behavior management. We also work with parents and parent advisory committees from each school site to increase parent involvement, especially for our LCAP forums. Um, of which many of those uh, parents are now part of our, of our district advisory committee. Uh, we also provide parent leadership institutes um, and parent trainings. Our parent trainings include topics anywhere from college and career awareness, technology, and basic parenting classes. And there you can see some of the topics such as uh, A through G, FAFSA, scholarships, et cetera. Most uh, of the trainings are ran through my educational service pro, uh, uh, team. So you see there that we have for LCAP, our migrant program, curriculum department, our FRC, our ACES, and our technology department. So the first one that we, I'm gonna share some information about is the Elementary Counselors Parent Institute. So if you see there, you can see at the bottom um, on the right side, their uh, web page uh, or their link to their trainings. So the Parent Institute is ran by the elementary counselors and they provide trainings on a series of topics, all of them related to parent parenting strategies. From 2016, 17 to 18, 19, we had 270 parents complete the Parent Institute. Um, in 2019, 20, we did hold six sessions, but due to the COVID closures, we did not complete them all. So this year, we initiated the same trainings and they're all being held virtually. And that is where the parents connect to this um, um, deck of slides. Our Family Resource Center um, holds a series of group sessions and, and different topics. So they have, for example, the Sure Helpline. They have a 12-week parenting session. And these are held at, uh, they're usually held at the Parent Center, but right now we're all doing them virtually. Then the CAP Council, is another resource that we use, and they provide eight-week parent training using the Wonder for Years curriculums and the STEPS curriculum, and these are also virtual this year. Club de Valores um, is also a parent group held on a weekly basis. Uh, Family Huey, Family Huey provided weekly tra uh, parent trainings at the Parent Center also, and again, this year, we're doing them virtually. And then we also have sessions that are, are um, shared or provided by Imperial Health County Behavioral Health, 
Um, our licensed clinical social workers also conduct trainings for parents and on social emotional security. And Ms. Hortensia Mendaris also conducts all types of trainings related to attendance. Um, she usually travels to the different sites to, to provide this training. In our ACES program, we also have the Latino Family Literacy Project. And as you can see in the, in the writing, it's for elementary parents, and this is to establish a family reading routines through the use of bilingual, culturally relevant books. So it, it is a 10-week program. Um, and then our parent project, K-8 and 7-8, they, they also have some trainings. These are laying their foundations for change and supporting change and improving relationships. These meetings were used, used to be held here. Um, right now, I'm not too sure if they're doing it virtually, but um, that was something that we did in the past. Um, they also have trainings on the parent, um, the ACES handbook, to explain to them the procedures of how ACES works. They have orientation meetings for the different ACES programs, and they have monthly cafecitos with the parents. Curriculum department has offered uh, trainings related to AVID, um, to college and career, A through G, FAFSA. Um, we've also done strategies for how to support our English learners, and we've also had trainings with math. Uh, this year, we're gonna be working with the iReady because we did uh, conduct the iReady with students, so now we're gonna start training our parents on how to read those results. And then we had our LCAP. Even though last year our LCAP, um, we, we, we closed in March, we had already completed all of our LCAP sessions. And although the state does not require an LCAP for this year, um, we decided to continue to use our funding based out of the 1819 plan so that we will continue to support our parents and all the activities that we had in our six goals. Um, and so th this was just a list of the, of the uh, LCAP meetings that we had last year. Technology, technology has been providing uh, support for parents both for instructional purpose as well as general parent support. So under the instructional, you see the Modern Learning Pairing Academy. So we actually brought in a, a group of parents that were interested in, in being part of this academy and they, they actually produced a lot of technology, uh, things such as clips, touchcast, uh, augmented reality, and Flipgrid. Um, now with distance learning, we've done trainings with Zoom, with iReady, with Google Classroom, Seesaw, Digital Citizenship, Khan Academy, Code.org, and we're still you know, preparing for other trainings as we get new platforms. Um, and then for general parent support, we have online registration support, technology helpline. Uh, we also have uh, parent orientations for the one-on-one -on -one devices that we're doing with the MacBooks and the iPads. Then Migrant, Migrant also has their own shared uh, training. So just by looking at the titles, we have the Parent Advisory Committee that meets monthly. Um, we have Family ELA and, uh, ELA and Math Nights uh, once a year. Uh, we, st we still hold a lot of the student parent FAFSA and college and career assistance. They have the general parent meetings. They also provide for our migrant parents the Sure, Help, sure Helpline Family Support Cohorts. Then you have also the different activities uh, to involve them, such as the family-to-family -family clothing that we do every holiday. Um, we, st we have student parent advocates, and they attend the different meetings, um, and these are our migrant specialists. Uh, we also have family case management, and uh, we have migrant TK to, through first great family literacy nights. There's also a lot of support for parents during our summer school. So in the next picture, picture you see our advisory committee parent panel. So during one of our LCAP forums, um, these are parents that through the LCAP and through the different uh, trainings that we've had, we've been able to build capacity and those are, have now become our lead parents in our advisory committee. So we had heard that some of our parents were interested in uh, training um, that we used, used to hold in the past called Pique. So just to share a little bit about what we've done so far, we sent out a survey to our parents uh, to see if there was interest and in, in how, how, how many parents were interested. So as of October 30, we had 122 responses in English. Currently, I checked today, we have 127, so just five more. Uh, we had 210 uh, on October 30th, uh, 30th, and as of today, we have 220 responses. And in terms of participation, we 
had 37.7% of the parents who responded to the survey, which is about 46 parents, that they would be interested in attending an eight-week parenting training workshop, um, in this case, uh, Pique. And in Spanish, we got 61% partici participation interest, so that's 128 parents that would like to attend the eight-week training. Of the different times, we also want to know when was their, what was their major time uh, in terms of interest, and the majority preferred the 6 p.m., so later in the evening. So that's, you see the percentages there. And the parent institute that we're looking at is Pique. Like I said, it's, it, we've had it in the past, so in 2004, ICOE used to offer the training. Um, and then between 2006 and 2011, different sites offered PK. I remember when I was a Willie Moreno teacher um, that I was part of the trainings for, for PK um, as a teacher representative. So PK started in 1987, and it, the purpose of it is to engage parents and to empower them to make decisions for their children. Um, they do learn a lot about the law and what are their rights. Um, and so they, what PIC is doing now is now they have it separated by grade level. So they have an elementary curriculum, a middle school curriculum, high school, and so forth. But depending on the numbers, like if we didn't have a, a big cohort of parents, then we could do one that was at, at the district level. Um, so based on the information and on the interest, right now it looks like we might be providing uh, the PIC Institute for one elementary and one district, one, I think the high school, one for secondary, one for the elementary, and then one district wide because the junior highs were the ones that had the lowest uh, response. Um, so the timeline, the reason we want to share this with you is because we're looking right now at our data and our responses. Uh, by the end of, the, of November, we're going to close the survey, and then based on the responses, we will be bringing to the board an agreement for, for Pique. Um, it's not really, it's not a really expensive program because we had seen other programs that were like a hundred grand. Um, this one is 6,000 for the first 70 participants. And then after that additional schools, you pay, um, 2,000. So it's not 6,000 per school. We were trying to do one per school, but since we didn't have the response for enough participants per school, that's what we're going to do some, maybe to an elementary, like I said, and one district wide, um, and then one for the high school. Um, and so if we do this between December and January, we bring the agreement, then between February and March, we'll work with Pique to st schedule the sessions and then hopefully have a, the parent completion or the celebration that they have by April of next year. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Okay, now we're down to consent approval of the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? I motion, Richard, I motion to uh, approve this consent agenda. And also I'd like to make a request. Um, the manager from Walmart has been very generous with the school district. As you can see, there's various uh, donations that they made to us um, this year. And I'd like to see if we can send them a letter of appreciation for their support. Um, he constantly calls us for, uh, for us to go pick up materials and so forth for us our students and I'd like to recognize them. I concur with that. Is there a second? I'll second motion? Richard with that same. Okay, that's nice. okay. all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, unanimous, thank you very much. Excellent idea. Thank you. And we'll follow up with it, thank you. Informational items, superintendent's report. Well, good evening trustees. I'm in team N community watching via live stream. Happy uh, belated Veterans Day to begin with. Uh, our schools were closed yesterday. November the 11th in observance of Veterans Day. So we would like to thank everyone who has served our country uh, in the armed forces and uh, their families as well. Um, we had our first ever virtual grand opening of the new 16 classroom building on Tuesday, October 27th at Calexico High School. Thank you trustees for your attendance. Uh, the virtual tour also highlighted the new state of the art culinary kitchen, which we believe is this, the the best in the state. Uh, we are very thankful to the community of Calexico for the passing of Measure V bond, which has provided the funding to build and modernize these additional beautiful facilities. And along the same note, uh, we would like to thank the community of, uh, community of Calexico for the recent passing of the Measure Q bond. 
The passing of Measure Q will allow for the continued improvement of facilities at Calexico High School, which include a new cafeteria multipurpose room, STEAM classrooms, a student services and administration building, a multipurpose physical education classroom, renovation of the current PE lockers, and a new PE locker building. We are very excited about the new state-of-the-art facilities this bond will bring to our students and our community, which will leave a long-lasting legacy. We are now on our 12th week of school, and we continue to successfully navigate and implement the distance learning plan. We continue to follow our learning continuity, continuity and attendance plan, which appro was approved by the school board on September 22nd. We're very proud of the service. Our wonderful staff continues to provide to our students, parents, and community. We thank our parents and community for their patience, and we continue to provide a quality education to our students during this unprecedented time. We're currently still in stage one of the new reopening plan put out by the California Department of, of uh, Health. We continue to monitor the latest information closely and we work with our local health agencies and our partners to ensure that we are doing what is best for the uh, interest of the entire community. As of today, we are in the purple stage with a COVID positivity rate of 18.55%. At our last board meeting on October the 8th, I reported that our positivity rate was at 9.4%. As you can see, our positivity rate has increased significantly at this point. As a reminder, to move to the red stage, one of the metrics is to be under 7% on our COVID-19 positivity rate. To bring students back on a hybrid model, we need to be in the red stage. Moving to the red stage before December seems very unlikely with the positive positivity rate going up. After December, we will carefully reassess our COVID-19 rates along with our local health department agency stakeholders and the board and determine when we can safely transition into a hybrid model. It is deemed safe when it is deemed safe for us to return and be able to reopen. And we do want to thank the community for their continued patience and flexibility. And as per our reopening plan that has been shared with the board, we continue to prepare our sites to transition to a hybrid model when it is safe to do so as determined by our local public health officer. And then lastly, there will be no classes between November 23rd and 27th due to the Thanksgiving break. School will, re will resume on Monday, November 30th. We want to wish everyone a restful and very safe Thanksgiving break. Our upcoming activities, our next regular board meeting will be on Thursday, December 10th at 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Measure V update. Can you hear me? Much better. Okay. First foremost, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, trustees, Lieutenant Carlos, Vega, community members, CDOC members, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. That's a big deal on the passage of Measure Q. Uh, Kim Desert and I represent your project management team from School Site Solutions. Um, Kim, I'd like Kim to start off the uh, update tonight with the Air Pollution Control Board paving grants. Okay. Yes. Um, I reached out to the Imperial County Air Pollution Board because as we noticed in the paper, Plexico was getting uh, a whole lot of money to pave the alleys in the city. So I talked to Mr. Brinkerhoff and he said there were 
the money's available and um, under this what they call rule 310 and also under AB 617 it's a new committee and so I met with him two weeks ago and we looked at the fire lane that is not paved from um, pretty close to where those interim housing is for the culinary and then it goes all the way around to the south and it meets up um, the fire lane that they're finishing right now on A2. And then we also looked at the road that goes from the teacher's parking lot that goes out to the ag building. And he thought both of those would um, fit very nicely in the grant. And so he will be taking it to the committee next week on the 18th. So we're hoping we can get some money for that. Culinary Arts Academy SFP seismic grant application with the Office of Public School Construction. School Site Solutions is pleased to announce that the district will be receiving $949,620 as the state contribution to the district's project. That is the state share. For the modernization piece, that was also part of the project, but not included in the seismic portion. It's only for the modernization. We have yet to, um, for that piece of it to get funded, the state has not, again, passed a general obligation bond to release those funds yet. So once the state has the proceeds, that portion for the modernization will be funded. Million dollar contribution, I'd say though, is a fair amount and, and a contribution for the, uh, for the culinary arts project. The A12 and 16 classroom punch list completion, all, a2 classrooms are instruction ready. Punch list items are being addressed. We received the punch list from the architect. Are reviewing it with the contractors and architect. We'll have it to Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Vega tomorrow for their review. In terms of the seven portable classroom uh, relocation. Those classrooms are being disassembled and prepped for relocation to the new location at the, at the district office property. If you drive by there, you can see that the foundations are near completion. Relocation and uh, commencement of the portable classrooms and the new modular bathroom is set for November 16th, 2020. That's when those buildings will start to be moved. Migrant uh, uh, building and the personnel building demolition uh, has started on Tuesday of this week. It should be about finished, and that's going to make room for the ward field expansion. A3 project, the buildings um, are scheduled to begin arriving the second week of December. As soon as we pull those portable classrooms off of the, uh, of the high school site, the seven portable classrooms, uh, we will commence the, uh, the foundations for those uh, for the new building. Uh, free gym. The interior painting is completed. It, that, that project is awesome as well. The accent colors are being applied to the interior. Electrical, low voltage systems have been completed. The audiovisual equipment is being installed. Metal frame doors are installed. The fitness center flooring is scheduled to be installed next week. And the gym equipment is tentatively set for mid-December arrival and setup. District office bathroom, partition um, per district upgrades have been ordered and for, they are being manufactured. The arrival date is an estimated three weeks with the two day install. Any questions about the projects thus far? I just wanna thank Kim for getting that extra funds for the, from the air pollution board, that's awesome. And also for John for getting the million dollars uh, I mean, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Good. You, the district is, you're doing awesome in your facilities program. Yeah. Gotta say. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. But Carlos, the dates that he gave us, uh, Dominguez gave us, they're in your, in the timeline that you're going to yes, provide. Yes, they are. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation. Okay, we'll go to the ROP committee. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. As you know, ROP continues to work with our staff 
Um, IRLP educational service staff have worked with to in developing ready to use workshops and creating resources for teachers and students during this distant learning on several topics such as social emotional learning, soft skills, career awareness, career exploration, career preparation, constructive use of time, financial literacy, and self-awareness along with how to do tutorials. Also, for example, um, some of the uh, career specialists have met with our teachers and have actually provided um, teaching time with some of our teachers. For example, uh, we have our career specialist that um, also had a presentation with Mr. Gastelum. He's uh, the responsible for the entrepreneurship class with 17 students. And so they shared uh, experiences in how to uh, pursue their, their careers. Also, um, <clears throat> The program manager and career specialist have met with Ms. Williams uh, several times and they're actually uh, uh, getting their, their curriculum ready and trying to help our students uh, with this social uh, distance learning. And RLP, the, uh, I mean, with the uh, administration, they're working with uh, Ms. Elisa Ramirez because uh, they're going to be providing training to our parents, our mothers, abuelitas, whoever needs it on how to deal with this distant learning uh, process. They're gonna show them how to look up grades and so forth, and Alisa has been uh, instrumental in trying to get this coordinated. So hopefully we can get uh, Ivory RP and Ms. Alisa going so we can get our parents trained so they can help their st students out during their, uh, with their homework. That's all I have. Well, thank you for all your efforts in, in this committee. Well, thank uh, uh, Lisa has been, like I said, very instrumental. She's been pushing it, um, and we're trying to get our parents educated in technology. So thank you very much. LKIP committee. Good evening again. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do not have an LCAP this school year. We're using the funding based on our goals from last year. But in, in lieu of that, we, we have the COVID-19 written operations report that the board approved on June 25th and the learning continuity plan, as Mr. Uh, um, Gonzalez mentioned earlier. Um, but in the previous LCAP, there is a part in the template that's called the CSI prompt. And because it's something that we have to follow through the ESSA state plan, um, we had to do a separate submission of the CSI prompt. And there's three questions that are asked, and it does not have to be board approved. It was already submitted to the county, but I did want to inform you that we did submit it on time. And it talks, the first question is, who are our CSI schools? And our CSI schools are Aurora High School. And the reason they're CSI is because of the graduation rate. They didn't meet the graduation rate, plus they're also uh, in the low in performing of our Title I schools when it Relate with, in relation to our SBAC scores in ELA and math. Um, the second school that's a CSI uh, school is Willie Moreno Junior High School, um, and they are also CSI based on the all student uh, scores as a Title I school. They're under the, the lowest 5% uh, of our schools. So with that comes some funding, and as part of the question is, well, how are we going to support this, these schools? Um, and so we did partner with ICOE, and thank you, board, for approving the plans with and the MOUs with ICOE. Um, and so we're meeting with these schools. We are having um, at least five sessions with them, and we will discuss needs assessment. We're going to look and analyze um, data from this needs assessment. We're going to look at root causes for the primary concerns. So why is it that our students are not performing well? Um, we will be sharing all this information for the school site counselor and our ELAC, um, and we'll look at research-based intervention. So if they're using programs that are not research-based, then we're gonna have to revamp them and look for research-based programs, and then their actions and goals have to be reflected on the SPSA. Then the third question is about how we're going to monitor. So we do have a system to monitor them, um, and in addition to that, we will continue to support our, our, our principals through Title I trainings, guidebooks, one-to-one -one support, and coaching. Uh, we have paired up the district office uh, administrators. We've all paired up with each of these schools. And although we have two schools that are CSI, we have some schools that are ATSI, which means that they need additional support because they're close to becoming a CSI school, mostly because of chronic absenteeism. Uh, and instead of the, the entire population, they're scoring low 
based on subgroups. So one school might be because of their SPET population, another group might be because of their English learners. So that's why they don't qualify for CSI. Um, they do not get funding. So what we did as a district, we, we set aside Title I funds to support those schools. And then we have what we call our CI schools. So our CI schools, like Cesar Chavez, uh, Bland Charles, Jefferson, they're not at risk right now, but we're still providing the same type of support so that we don't fall uh, into those categories. And so the plan was submitted. Um, if anything, if they were to return it for some recommendations, we would just update it, but that does not require board approval, but I just want to inform the board that we did submit it. Any questions? No, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. thank you for the good work. Any questions on the accounts payable pre list? And now we'll go to K5 board reports. Michael? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Board President. Um, again, I think you know, yesterday, November 11th, our, you know, our, our nation, our community, an opportunity to recognize our Veterans Day. And likewise, again, I think uh, you know, we've got a number in our community, a number of individuals in our community, men and women in our district our employees, and certainly even the young men and women who are products of the district who recently graduated, and including board members who have served on our uh, armed forces. So again, I want to thank all of them. Thank you guys for your, your work and your service there. I'm wrapping up my, my term here now, I believe, in uh, this district as a term and as a board member. And, uh, you know, uh, it's been my pleasure to, to serve along with you, uh, to serve in our community. Uh, it's been a humbling experience. And I thoroughly thank the support from everybody here and everybody on the committee for that. I think in the last four years, uh, this board and this district administration and staff have made tremendous progress uh, in a number of different areas. Uh, again, a little more, it's been more steady, I think, in the district, moving projects forward, moving uh, programs forward, challenging times. But uh, again, this district has overcome and continues to amaze, I think, myself and a lot of individuals in the community as well. Um, certainly the work is not done um, and the district again will be moving forward and continue with that as well um, again as a as a product of the district and as a resident you know I'm very proud of what the district's done uh, again I continue to support the educational community as a lifelong educator you know I, I see that happening here in the district and I'll continue to support that any any help you guys need in any way just feel free to call I'll be glad to assist uh, but again, I want to thank all uh, my fellow board colleagues for the last four years, the staff and administration here in the district office, amazing. Again, you know, I get to hear a lot of positive comments across the county from different school sites, the county, um, even as much as yesterday, positive comments from about teachers uh, and the distant learning and work they're doing here. And this is from teachers in El Centro and Imperial. So. Uh, a lot of good things happening here, so I wish the best uh, as the district continues uh, working peacefully, uh, united, and together. Um, along those notes, um, kind of moving forward, a couple of thoughts as I kind of wrap up. I, and I'm hoping, and I know this district is, continues to work on social emotional learning or the cell. You know, the, this COVID exhaustion that we're experiencing and seeing is tough on our kids, it's tough on our staff. The well-being of our staff is important, but certainly the families and children that we serve. It is exhausting, and you know, as you know, and we hear the COVID uh, pandemic in our county is not improving. So I implore the district continue to provide those ser services, to support the resources for the social emotional learning of our community. And also interesting will be to look at the academics. I think at the end of the semester, you know, we're seeing academic results from other counties. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what how our students are doing here during this time. Uh, and lastly, I think uh, uh, information for the board, that would be good to hear. Again, speaking of COVID, AB 285, I believe it is, talking about uh, communication uh, with our employees uh, starting January 1st. I believe, you know, you guys are prepared for it, the templates are ready, just talking about how we communicate our COVID uh, results and experience, not just with ourselves, but with our associations, our teachers, our whole bargaining units. And then Title IX is always interesting right now. Um, as you know, we're looking at uh, communication and templates. I think we've talked about that, but that might be two good things for the board to hear in the future. So with that said, I'll wrap it up and I thank you gentlemen uh, for the last four years. You guys will do great. Staff will do great. Uh, no doubt about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Lencho. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to take this time 
not to I need to clarify something and this is in regards to item G um, the reason I voted no and I, I haven't clarified it um, uh, at this point and for the record I have nothing against Miss Castillo being on the board whatsoever and I want it on on record um, the reason I voted no was because I when 2014 I promised transparency when I came on board and all at least I could say my view in this I wanted to open it up to the community to see if any community members wanted to take a, a shot at work, what Ms. Castillo was doing and if no one stepped up then I was pleased to have Ms. Castillo on that uh, personnel commission and that's why I wanted to clarify for the public my voters and us as a whole and second Mike thank you for the time four years um, we not always agreed but we got things done so I appreciate your time and best of luck in your future endeavors and lastly I would like to uh, congratulate all the veterans Kiki Ciro thank you for your service and also thank uh, CSCA ACT our management team for their dedication and hard work. I know times are hard. Um, you hear a lot from me lately and because sometimes I get frustrated and um, maybe I'm the only one that sees the issues. But I, I can assure you that if we work together, we can get through this. Um, we have Measure Q on our table now and we have to make it succeed. We already did one and hopefully we can get the other one accomplished before my term is up so again thank you for your time especially our staff and keep safe thank you thank you Gigi. well on the same lines as what michael and lynch was just stated i uh, just want to recognize our veterans down the community uh there's there's plenty of of you know veterans just here in calexico also as well and a lot of students that have, have gone just wish them the best those that have passed uh, pay the ultimate sacrifice you know want to thank them and their families for you know doing what they did for us I also want to thank our uh, staff um, especially our food services they're out there um, every morning uh, feeding our community as you know as we were informed um, not only that along the lines with what Michael's saying you know um, COVID is taking a toll um, I see it you know with you know my daughter seeing some of her you know uh, alum you know students that are in the same class with her and you know along the lines of what michael was saying the social emotional i think that's something that's good that we're doing and it's something that's very well needed um not only with our students but with our staff also as well because it is does take a toll on on everyone uh, michael i just want to say thank you uh for the last four years uh learned a lot from you um you know um ups and downs not only that you brought a lot a different insight into uh this uh board also from the state side, updating us with different information what was coming down the state um, as that uh, you were an asset here and you are going to be missed. Um, and I just want to thank you and, uh, you know, wish you nothing but the best. Uh, with that said, uh, thank you and thank everyone out for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you. Cito. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our meeting. Um, on the same line as my peers, I want to thank um, all the veterans and the community. Um, God knows that we did not do it to be recognized and that's something that I share with a couple of people that uh, it feels weird to be recognized for something that we did it out of our own uh, hearts. So if uh, for my brothers and sisters, Kiki, um, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, I went around and saw some of the schools uh, they're being they're clean. I visited Blanche Charles and uh, it's, uh, teachers being engaged, the teachers that were there, uh, everybody being safe. So it's working out. What we're doing is working. We are the biggest district district in the county, and we are taking uh, we are taking the lead in what is it that is being done in the district. So let's keep it up. Uh, our, administ our administration is doing a wonderful job making sure that our teachers and our staff 
uh, are being taken care of. So that's that's all, all that matters. Uh, I know our basketball uh, uh, kids, the ones that got the one CIF that being recognized as Friday. So uh, I'm going. And as I mentioned before, all of us can go. Mr. Mr. Gonzalez, uh, I think I sent you the uh, the email about the uh, the legal precedents regarding uh, uh, of board members being in a social a social gathering. So uh, it's a first for us in basketball. It's been a long time. So I hope to see you guys there. And Mike, um, it's been fun. Although it's not over yet, not until December 10. Uh, but if that's the way that it goes, uh, I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank the, um, well, welcome everybody, everyone to the meeting. And I want to thank the veterans in our community, especially our two board members, Kiki and Cito, who served our country. And then I want to thank the community for passing Measure Q. I am totally overjoyed that it got 74 as when i saw it last night it was 74 percent um it's you know we're going to modernize the high school and people are going to be very happy with the results and then i want to thank the staff for working for working so hard i mean you guys have done a wonderful job all our staff and michael you will be missed you're a key member of our board and you will, be, you will be missed. And congratulations to Kiki for being back on the board. So and, you know. Yes. But thank you all for attending the meeting. And um, I think I got everybody. That's it. Thank you. Now we'll go to action items. Okay, we'll go to... L1, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and, uh, and Eloterio Lopez for bus driver recertification training. So moved. moved by Kik Lencho. Second. Seconded by Kiki. Austin Ferris, say hi. Aye. Aye. Unanimous, thank you. L2, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Pearson for K 12 English language development. Tell assessment for 2021 school year. So moved. Second. Moved by Kiki, seconded by Lencho. Austin in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L3. Agreement okay. between Calexico Unified School District and Ed Leader 21 for the 2021 school year. I'll make a motion to approve. Moved by Michael. Second. Seconded by Lencho. Austin in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L4, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Think Big to provide assembly style messages to students and staff and they could come at a junior high school. So moved. Moved by Kiki. Second. Seconded by Cito. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L5, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and CDR Electrical Inc. for the electrical work at Flexco High School, ninth grade campus. So moved. Second, with, with just a, a question. Who made the motion? I made the motion. Kiki seconded by Lencho. And um, I went through it. It doesn't have the end date on here. I'm sure it's gonna. Thirty days from the notice, uh, the time the notice to proceed is given. If I give it tomorrow, it's thirty days from tomorrow hmm. for the project to be completed. So they got they got until December eleventh, ele December eleventh, right, or December twelfth. So, right. So, so right now I rely on my maintenance and operations supervisor to keep me updated. But if needed, I'm at the sites. So I do, you know, go visit sites to monitor and so check out work. Going on the contract, that's what, you're what was that? Is your name going, going on the contract? I am the one that's going to be signing the the contract. Yes. Okay. All right. So then I'm good. Okay. I was in favor. Say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. L6, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Dermis Floor Covering for construction services, small projects for trailer restroom floor at Jefferson Elementary School. So move the same question, completion date. And Seven days from the time the notice to proceed is awarded. 
Okay. Mm. And you're signing the contract. Yeah, I am signing the contract, sir. Second. Yes. Motion by Lencho, seconded by Kiki. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L7, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and the Imperial County Office of Education for the use of presence learning proprietary special education platform to conduct virtual psychological and the academic as achievements. Move to assessments. Second. Made by CEDO, seconded by Kiki. Austin in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L8, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Dell Inc. for the use of Adobe licenses. Let's make some motion to. Second. So. Motion by Lencho, seconded by Mike. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L9, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and School Site Solutions, Inc. for project management services of Measure Q projects. Hmm. Okay, so what does this mean? What, why? This means that we're asking the board to approve uh, School Site Solutions to continue with the project management and also now added the CEQA, uh, DTSC, and everything else that needs to be, uh, you know, done for now the Measure Q has passed. So now we're asking the board to continue to support the district and, uh, you know, us uh, with uh, John Dominguez and Kim Desert to, you know, continue what we have done under Measure B to continue to do that with Measure Q. That's what we're asking. But Measure Q hasn't been, it hasn't been ratified yet. So. No, Measure Q has passed. We so therefore we need to continue the services. We would like to have to continue the service of school site solution. Measure Q has passed. There's no way it's not gonna not, not gonna pass. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Seconded by Michael. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No. I was I was gonna say just table it till December, Mike. Yeah. I mean uh Richard, once it's uh, once it's finalized and approved, we have to wait till December. It has to be certified by the county. We, we have That's to wait. Uh, you're delaying the potent. The we gotta start running now. The project is 74 percent. There's no way in heck that it's not gonna be certified. Why would we want to delay this? This here, which here we're talking about deadlines. We want to meet all these deadlines, but now we're delaying it because we want them. You think it's going to drop to 50 per 51 percent? I'm not, I'm not saying that, Richard. I just want to make sure that it gets certified by the county first, like how we waited last time for Measure V when it was certified. So there's a motion on the floor. There's a motion on the floor. It failed on. So it, I know that Lencho wouldn't know, Cito wouldn't know. So you're going to vote no too. Correct. I'm going to table. I'm going to table it. I want to table that, it. So that, that that will be a new. That will be That's a, a new motion. Yeah. New motion. Go ahead. I want to make a, a motion to table it till our next meeting in December. I'll second that. Motion made by Kiki to table it. Seconded by Cito. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. So it's 4 1. Michael, two, did you two vote? Or three. Huh? Um, Why? Well, he hasn't voted, so. He hasn't voted. I'll say aye. A 4 1. L10, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Standard Electronics for the installation of equipment for alarm services for the new A283 building and Godfrey Gym at the Calexico High School. Mm. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Lencho, seconded by Cito. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L11, agreement and bid award to Oakview Construction Inc. for the William Moreno School Junior High and Kenny Gardens Elementary Musco Light Pole Installation Project. I move so. with the question. I mean, I, I don't. I, what moved is that? By, moved by Cito. I'll second. Seconded by Michael. Yeah. But Carlos, yeah. what is that? Or yeah. So those are the the Musco poles that are basically the poles that are going to be put at Willie Moreno and Kennedy Gardens. Mm -hmm. Two poles at each site, and those are to be able to put the antennas on there oh. to be able to provide the this internet. This is for service. the county. For the border link project. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L12, authorization to seek proposals for e rate services. Make a motion to approve e rate. Motion by Michael. Second. Second, Second by Cedar. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L13, contract between Calexico Unified School District and Imperial County of Education for front time 
management subscription and implementation costs for 2021. What's this? Um, is it for Does our the, new uh, system? Yeah, yes. The card? Time accounting, not front, yeah. not absence management. No card, management. but... Uh, so, yeah, maybe some... So, if I may, uh, L13 is uh, tied to L16. They're both together. So, L13 is what is the software to do the mm -hmm. time accounting system, the mm -hmm. management of the software. So, for example, when it comes to the purchase of the equipment, L16, that's to be able to do two things. Be able to do digital check-ins, for example, or do biometric uh, checking in. So, that's why they go hand in hand. 13 is the software. 16 is the equipment to be able to do it. Mm. So a question, Carlos? Um, and maybe Mr. Vega. Uh, it, will this be synced with Synergy or? Um, Escape. Escape? <coughs> yes, so Frontline, as you recall, was uh, purchased by Escape, our mm -hmm. financial system, system software. So this will now allow us to digitize um, time cards, basically. So it'll save time. Staff, time, time, effort, energy, correct. And then this is for time accounting, not absence management. That's something else. Okay. Yeah, that's something else. Okay, I'm good. <coughs> okay, I'll some fair. Say aye. 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 I, I will second. He was first. I will second. All some fair. Say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. L14. Are we going too fast, Johnny? Yep. <laughs> Approval of Kaluxky Unified School District Annual Five Year Developer Fee Report. So moved. Moved by Kiki. Second. Second. Seconded by Cito. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L15 purchase of Ford Escape and a Ford Edge from Calexico Robinson Ford for the Food Service Department. I have a uh, motion to approve, but I had a question for Mr. Vega. In is there, is, is the there a second for the motion? I'll second. Yeah. Moved by Cito. The, the, remember the question I asked about the difference in, in vehicles and so forth? Can we get the first question? It just to provide some direction how the other well, I mean, either he wants a, two different cards or so, one. So one card is going to be used for site visits. Okay. Which is oh, vehicle, okay. The other, side, the other vehicle, the bigger one, is going to be for food delivery. So, I mean, because they're almost the same <coughs> size, just equipped with different. Right. So it's, each one is going to serve a different purpose. Okay. Uh, do know that for us to purchase these vehicles using Fund 130, mm -hmm. we have to have CDE approval. Yeah. So the quotes and everything was already submitted to CDE and CDE approved the purchase as stamped. Yeah. Well, I understand that. Uh, my question is, if we pay a little more, we can get a little more for more use of it. That's all I asked. I mean, because... Would you have to go back to CDE? Oh, it would, it would change things? Okay, then yep. forget it. Then okay, all in favor, say aye. Uh, yeah. Uh, aye. aye. Unanimous, thank you. L16 <coughs> purchase touch point software time clocks with biometrics and photo capture district-wide. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Akiki, seconded by uh, Michael. Austin in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L-17, approval of intermediate advanced emergency response course for Aurora Continuation High School. So moved. Moved by Second. Lencho. Seconded Second. by Cito. Austin in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L18 teacher licenses for super supplemental CUDA software through your renewal for Calexico High School. Which one was it? L19? L18. 18. 18. 18? Okay. So moved. I'll second. Moved by uh, uh, Lencho, seconded by Kiki. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L19 awarding of RFP sign factory for the purchase of digital marquee for Calexico High School. Make a motion to approve. Second. Moved move by Michael, seconded by... I do by have a question. Moved no. by Michael, seconded by Kiki. Yeah. Question. Who who, it, who drew this up here? That here was provided Sanders. by Sanderson. Sanders. Is this marquee going to look like this, the, the proposals? Well, let me, let me take it to you. Because the, the, the proposal that and, I, and this is really nice. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, that's exactly what you're going to It's a triangle, uh, three monitors on top. on top. So it's, it's yeah. So it's a three version. It's a three-sided marquee. You want to put it up so people can see it? Um, um, where would it? That's the one you can see it from all over. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a three-sided. Oh, okay. I thought he was talking about last time. Okay. 
Yeah. It's a triangle. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, that's why, because I, I was trying to match it to our. Yes, it's a triangle. Is that, is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a 10 millimeter, correct? It's a 10 millimeter, yes. And, and you know why I'm asking these questions? Because our, our marquees throughout our school district, the ones that we built, have mm -hmm. looked different. In fact, I went to Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Jefferson is no taller than I am. Mm -hmm. And I have an issue with that because if you park a car on the street and then another park the car, you, you can't see it. It defeats the whole purpose. This is to communicate with our community, our right. students, our parents. So I don't know who installed that because it's very short. Yeah, this and is a 20, the pole. Well, I know that. And, and that's why I'm, I'm making sure that that's that the way it's going to look. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, drive by Jefferson is really low. And once you park cars there, okay. you can't see it. So it defeats yeah, the whole purpose. It's not on there, Janet. It's not on the attachment. What? The, the sign that the... Yeah, that, that's why I'm asking because it's important if it's going I mean we have our front of our school so beautiful and not to put something as nice as that would kind of also defeat the purpose here because uh our school looks nice and then to just have a pole there with with a marquee I don't think it, it's going to work out this right. one has a foundation mm -hmm. kind of goes up and mm -hmm. I notice that also the poles that we have on the marquees are rotting away because the, the sprinklers are hitting the poles and are, are rotting the poles away. So mm. this one has concrete. I don't yeah, know how it has long. It's a concrete foundation. Yeah, that's on the bottom and then it goes up. And then it goes up. It looks really nice and that's why I, yeah, I'm making a, it's sure It's a three-sided, 20-foot pole and uh, concrete foundation. Yeah, and not only, but also on the pole, correct? So much, I think it's four feet requirement. Um, because some of the ones that we have in our school, other school district don't have that. And that, again, uh, water and everything, it won't rot these poles away. And then we're paying, okay. paying $88,000 for this. So let me get you that information. I, I'm pretty sure it is sitting on a, on a, on a platform higher. I don't know. Just no, no. Know I, I know the platform. All of our marquees have platforms. Mm -hmm. the, this one, that plan there has the platform plus a uh, concrete um, cylinder that goes up about this high, about four, three feet. Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, four we'll feet, exactly. Back, so no, no, he's yeah. happy with it. No, 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 I'm saying, but just a picture. No, yeah. I'm not saying this thing, I'm just saying the picture. I don't want to approve something and then later on <laughs> it's just a pole. This is what you're going to oh, get. It's a, it's a three-sided. So this one, this is the model that you're going to you get. You see that, you see, look, you see that pole right here? This is a mat. It's important. Why? Because the sprinklers and everything, they uh, don't damage that pole or the wires that are underneath. Okay. So because I need like I need I to said, check. Other school other school sites, they don't have that, and they're rotting away okay. the wires and the poles. Okay. Okay. So you're happy with the concept? Yeah. Okay, so if it's like if it, it that's the concept, but I don't know if the part is gonna be metal or concrete. That's the part that I need to check. Well, the bottom is concrete, and okay. then the the pole is metal. Okay. In fact, one of them even said that he would uh, powder coat it, which even makes it better. Okay. Because it, it withstands our heat and our water and everything else. Okay. Okay. This motion to the floor. Let's call so, for the question. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Wait. Hold on. So you're gonna. Sh I will check. No, I will check. Uh, by tomorrow, I'll give you an answer on this. Okay. But yeah. it's already been, and it's going to get approved. Yeah, that's, call, that's, the one, that's the one that, that Mr. Sanders had, was talking about the last time when we did the walkthrough. He was telling, he was, he explained it to me how mm -hmm. it was. And, and that's that's how exactly it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. So I'll, let me make a call and then I'll yeah, give you a better I, response. I rather, if I'm going to give you my vote, I, yeah, I like. Was it a unanimous vote? Or well, I don't have, we're, hold, we're holding up. We're waiting just to make just sure. To oh, he's going to call right now? Yeah, well, we can go on to the next and then finish it up. Okay? No, Quick let's part. wait. Can we put some music? Yeah. <laughs> so I think historically, those other elementary marquees may have been fundraisers by the school, like by the ASB parents. And that's why they're not as elaborate or electric. They're no. older ones. No, we put them up. But it does. We, we put, put them up. Michael, it does make a difference. Caps. That that, that little that that uh, cement 
it makes oh, yeah, a big difference. I mean, it, yeah. it makes it the last that much longer. So even before El Cap, yeah. though. And like you said, Jefferson, really on the set, though. I mean, it's too short. I mean, it, it defeats the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. So in the past, I think the school sites fundraised for their yeah. marquees. I think uh, the old ones were. The old ones, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now these are all digital. The El Caps, yeah. Now yeah. the new ones are digital. Yeah, all the new ones so that was, uh, have been El Cap. Yeah, 88,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, that's, if that's, I'm okay with that. That's nice. I mean, it goes with the, the buildings. It's like a turret. Okay, it's going to flip. No, I mean, just the, the screens and everything. And you know, now they have them bilingual, too. Engineer all metal, provide illuminated interior work, the contract doesn't read that. Oh, it doesn't? It says it's steel, I think. They, they just talk about the middle part and the pole. Carlos, where are they going to be located at? I forgot where Santa Cruz is going to locate that one at. Right on the corner gate. I know I saw a rendering of it. Uh, it, is, it is on the northwest end of the of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So the, the footing's already there. The mic, right? The, the yeah. Cement? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the concrete would be a lot better. Make sure it's there forever. Yeah, no, I, I saw it. No, that's not. You could, you're going to be able to see it from the corner. Oh. Uh, we can either table it until December, or because right now, I mean, I'm trying to. No, I'm, 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 I'm good. Well, I mean, let's table it. Make another motion in this. Okay, so oh, there's a motion on the floor to approve this. So it's going to be rejected. I vote. Who, you who you made, made the motion. motion. Yeah. No, who, who made the who, motion? Who made the motion first to approve it? Uh, it Lencher did. And me, right? Yeah, and yeah. you seconded. Yeah. So there's a motion on the floor. This motion is to approve this item. Well, let's call for the I'll question. I'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Four. Any no's? There's a motion on the floor. Is no. It's not defeated. So you said no? Okay. L20. Monday? I'm lost. L20. Variable term waiver 2020. 2021 school year for Jenny Bacheco. Is there a motion to approve? Yeah, I'll move to approve. Move by Cito. Second. Seconded by Kiki. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L21, adoption of job description, expanded learning program, lead tutor. What, what are we paying them now? This particular one is replacing the um, site coordinators that we had before because teachers are not at their sites uh -huh. to do this and because the ACES tutors are working during the day. Um, and so the teachers, even if they were on site, are busy teaching and everything, so they can't do that. So they've created this lead tutor um, position. So, yes, just for that. The next one is, has to do with the pay increase. Yeah, so this one's just replacing. Look, look at who submitted it. Why is 
Don't we have an ACES coordinator for this? So if we do, because I know we do, then why is Ms. Price submitting this? Isn't she in charge of? She's the director that oversees the ACES coordinator. So Ms. Brisa Huerta Price is a director. She oversees that position. First, we need a motion on the floor. Is there a motion on the floor for the adoption of the job description? I'll make a motion to approve. Moved by Michael. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Cito, not discussion. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L22, adoption of job description and hourly rate, extended day academy. Academic tutors for expanded learning. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so um, this one, they were paid to the tutors were paid two different rates, one for academic uh, tutoring and one when they did enrichment activities. So it was a, a paperwork nightmare because they would do some academic tutoring, mm -hmm. then maybe go outside and do some games. And so those had to be different pay rates. Um, so the first thing that needed to be addressed was the minimum wage. It's um, coming up to um, going to 14 and then 15. Um, but what they did was worked on those enrichment activities to be um, content area based, academic, academically based um, enrichment activities so that they can do one rate um, for the whole thing. So the, there's two classes of the extended day tutors that were in the, in the notes there. Extended day academic tutor two will be at 20 per hour. And that's going to be just for every hour, whether doing enrichment or tutoring. And then the academic tutor three will be the one at 15 per hour. And that puts it up so that we're safe with all the uh, minimum wage increases. And it really helps with the timekeeping and everything um, like that. So it's really a, a bonus to get those enrichment activities to really be centered around content as well, academic content. Okay. Who's, who's making the motion to approve? I don't no. think so. No, no one owns it yet. There's a new one. I'll move to approve. Moved by Cito. Second. Seconded by Lencho. I was in favor. Say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Al 23 adoption of job description, executive director of facilities planning and maintenance of operation. If I may, uh, Board President Romero, I had discussed this one uh, with you earlier. There's been a recommendation with legal in regards to item 23 and 28 that is on the agenda. So legal is recommending that 23, that one be canceled out and that uh, what stays on the agenda is item L28, which has the update, updated uh, job description, the updated salary schedule and the resolution to eliminate the director of maintenance operations mm -hmm. and transportation position. So when we get to L28, then that's when the board will take action as per legal's recommendation. So since L23 is on here, do we need do we need to reject this or? So that one would be canceled out. No action. No action? Right. Okay. L24, first reading a revised board policy, married, pregnant, Parenting students. I'll make a motion to approve. Yeah. I'll second. Michael. Second. Second by Kiki. How's it fair? Say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. L25. First reading of new board policy 4033 lactation accommodation. Second. Moved by Lencho. Second with a question. Seconded by Michael. So, question on this one, uh, on this particular policy. Do our sites have uh, lactation rooms? Available for staff? Yeah, so um, some of the new um, requirements there is that we have to have a space. We don't mm -hmm. necessarily have to have a special, uh, room, like a yeah. dedicated room, but if there's a room that's used for other things, it has to be able to be um, used for uh, lactation um, activities um, exclusively without interruption and obviously made private. So that's what um, this is doing. But we don't, some places, ha I know some sites have rooms that they can designate, but most are going to be, you know, other areas that are also used, but have to be um, made per the requirements to be available at the time without interruption. So there With is several things that's listed in there. They have to have yeah. several places, a place to put a pump, place to sit, those kind of things. So do we do have locations identified at sites? Um, I'm, I haven't checked with them myself, but, but we will with that this policy. Is, yeah, that's a okay. requirement here. Thank you. Once we adopt this board policy. Good. Yeah. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 
Unanimous, thank you. Uh, 26, resolution regarding the proposed authorization for Imperial Valley Telecommunications Authority to install equipment at district sites for the border link antenna project. So moved. Second. Moved by Lencho. Seconded by Kiki. There's a voice vote, voice call road vote. Yes. Michael? Yes. Lencho? Yes. Kiki? Yes. Tito? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Unanimous, thank you. L27 resolution regarding disposition of surplus acid, non acid technology equipment at Dual Elementary. Mm -hmm. I'll second the resolution. Moved by Lencho, seconded by Michael. Also resolution. Voice call vote. Myself? Michael? Yes. Kiki? I mean Lencho? Yes. Kiki? Yes. Tito? Yes. Ah, yes. Unanimous, thank you. L28. Resolution regarding reorganization of classified management positions, including the approval of revised job description and revised salary schedule for Executive Director of Facility Planning, Maintenance and Operations. So moved. Second. Moved by Kiki, seconded by Lencho. Voice call vote. Michael? Yes. yes. Lencho? Yes. Kiki? Yes. Tito? Yes. Ah, yes. Unanim unanimous, thank you. L29, Certificated Employment Report. It's a recommendation that the board approve the employment report with the following change on the Certificated Employment Report under the MEP Elementary Extended Day Program that in regards to the hours per teacher, they will be 134 hours and that other teachers will be added to the Migrant Elementary uh, Program. Thank you. Do we need to have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Make a motion to approve certificate report. Second. Moved by Castillo, seconded by Alvarado. Austin Ferris, say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. L30, classified employment report. Recommendation that the board approve the classified employment report as submitted. So moved. Moved by Kiki. Seconded by Lencho, Austin Ferris, say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. Any more announcements for a uh, closed session? None. So there's a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Kiki, seconded by Lencho. I was in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you very much.